Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Morgana and today I'll be demonstrating this beautiful oncoming storm painting in watercolour for you. So I'm beginning with a piece of uh, cotton watercolour paper. This is Saunders Waterford. I've got it taped onto my board and just with a simple strip of uh, masking tape going across the uh, midsection there. Uh, my colours are just popped up on the screen. Uh, I'll also pop them in the video description below along with uh, a list of all the other bits and bobs that I'm using. Uh, but let's get right to it with uh, wetting the top two thirds of the paper which is going to be our wonderful sort of stormy sky. This is actually a really really lovely simple way of putting in this rich coloured sky and making it look quite natural and quite sort of loose and spontaneous. So we're using wet and wet technique today. I'm uh, using my large two inch uh, synthetic wash brush to just uh, get that nice and wet and whilst the water is soaking into the paper I'm going to lay out my colours. You can see I've just got my palette on the right there, uh, adding in some indigo, some Payne's grey, a little turquoise uh, and a touch of raw sienna as well. These are all Winsor & Newton Cotman range colours. And to start with, I'm actually using a very recent bit of kit that I picked up using an art sponge. Uh, just dipped in a little water and then used to gently sort of daub a light little bit of um, the raw sienna across the left part of our sky here. Just to give it a little bit of brightness, a little bit of a glow coming in from the underbelly of the uh, deep clouds that we're going to put on. And now with the uh, sponge, I'm also going to put on some indigo. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I am going to be using the sponge for uh, basically the entirety of this, uh, this stormy sky. Uh, it really doesn't take very long. I think the sponge gives you good coverage, uh, good sort of natural sort of puffy cloud looking texture, really simply. Um, it's a way to avoid those sort of streaky brush lines that are quite easy to get if you're trying to uh, pull in some natural cloud shapes. Uh, simply just a different technique that I'm using today. just want to show you that you don't always have to use your conventional sort of brushes and bits and bobs. Uh, it's great to try new things and sometimes, sometimes they just they, they work really, really well. <laughs> so on top of the indigo, I'm now adding in a little bit of Payne's Grey is going to be the majority of the colour we're going to have in our sky. The indigo and Payne's grey work really well uh, sort of against one another. But I'm also just going to add in now a little bit of turquoise. This is a lovely bright sort of rich colour uh, and this is just going to prevent the sky from becoming too sort of dark and heavy. All these sort of dark colours. The indigo is very dark, the Payne's grey obviously is very very dark so um, the turquoise is just going to give us this little pop of brightness that's going to complement everything else really, really nicely. So I'm concentrating the turquoise around the sort of right hand side uh, of the painting because I want the majority of the darts to be uh, on the left side as though we've got some really sort of nice heavy clouds sweeping in from the left side sort of coming in across, across the water. Which is why you'll see me here, I'm trying to concentrate some Payne's Grey in this top left corner and just slowly working away with the sponge to uh, begin building up some colour. May of course be necessary to um, squeeze out more paint as you go along. Uh, <laughs> I found that I did actually use more than I expected here. I suspect that the sponge is quite thirsty and is actually sucking some of it up so uh, this uh, did end up using more paint than I anticipated. You can see here I squeezed out a nice good dollop of indigo and I'm really getting that nice and rich and thick along that top sort of left side just dabbing it up across the page. I've got my, uh, my painting flat today rather than on my board. Uh, you can see it's just flat there on some newspaper in case of spillages uh, and just sort of letting everything run uh, as, it, as it wants. <laughs> is the joy of wet and wet using plenty of water and just getting everything to sort of move about a little bit uh, 
Obviously if I had my board tilted, which I usually do, then it would all sort of start to run downwards. As it is, uh, I'm sort of letting everything run naturally where it wants to. So it's, it's running a little bit. You can see that sort of top edge of that dark indigo cloud that I've put across the, um, across the bright spot. You can see that's just starting to uh, run and to bleed into the raw sienna that I've already put on there, which is, uh, well, it's exactly what I wanted. It's giving that lovely sort of soft feathered edge. And I'm just sweeping as well. Did you see that? Sweeping the, uh, the dry part of the sponge across the edges of those clouds there and giving that sort of wispy look that you do sometimes get with cloud, you get that little trailing bit sort of skimming across the bright part of the sky. Simply just keep on uh, layering up and blending the colours until you're, until you're happy with the finished look. I'm trying to make sure I leave the sort of nice pale parts of the sky, making sure the colour doesn't bleed into them too much so we get that nice sort of really striking sort of bit of light peeping out from the underbelly of that really thick dark indigo paint that, uh, that I've put on. And there we go, that's the sky done. The observant among you will notice that I've had to put a fresh piece of uh, masking tape just along that sky there, along the uh, bottom edge. What I did was I, I peeled it off just now and then remembered that I wanted to put in uh, a distant headland, which uh, I, I need the tape for <laughs> to get that nice clean line. So, uh, you know, nothing terrible, just pop a clean bit of tape on, just make sure you follow. Uh, the same line again and uh, no worries, good as new. Uh, so I'm just using a flat brush here to uh, pop in just a nice little distant headline using again indigo and some Payne's grey to get those nice dark colours that are going to stand up against that really rich dark sky that we've just put in. Uh, and because I am uh, doing this wet on wet, you can see that the uh, the colours are just starting to bleed upwards into the sky. We've got a uh, we're getting a really sort of soft line for this headland here. It's going to actually start diffusing really nicely. Get that nice sort of soft misty line rather than a very hard edge. I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. It's a lovely simple way of getting 
uh, that impression of a distance of a spit of land uh, across the horizon line when you're putting in a big old sort of lake shore like I'm about to pop in in that lower third uh, of the painting. You can see again, because I'm using quite wet paint on this uh, left side, how quickly it's sort of blooming upwards into the sky. Uh, it's almost forming uh, a bit of a cauliflower there on that side because that's uh, part of the paper was beginning to dry uh, when I did this. It's actually given us that really lovely sort of um, texture there for the uh, distant headland. It looks like it's got perhaps a forest uh, blooming across the top there. Really nice, interesting sort of natural looking texture which I'm, uh, which I'm really pleased with. So just carefully peel the tape off when you're done. Uh, use a piece of clean tissue to just clean up the edges there. Make sure you've not got any paint that's going to run or smear. Uh, and this is what it looks like now that it's dry. You can see those colours are still really, really rich and vibrant. We've got a lot of uh, lovely texture and movement in the sky that uh, came from using the art sponge. Uh, we've still got that lovely gleam of light coming through there. So what I'm going to do now is work on the uh, work on the water for our lake. Uh, so I've popped another piece of masking tape across. Uh, this time to just make sure I keep that really clean line. You can see I've left maybe a millimetre and a half, two mils perhaps. Uh, got a little bit of white space there uh, covered up by the tape which is to leave a clean line, uh, that sort of impression of glow of light across that horizon line that I've actually wanted to keep this time rather than having a, a horizon that meets on a sort of darker line. I hope I'm explaining that well. <laughs> You'll be able to see at the end. Uh, but again, exactly uh, the same sort of step process, except this time I'm using a brush because I want uh, lines to uh, show the texture of the water rather than the sort of soft puffiness uh, that was going to show the texture of the clouds. So we're beginning again with raw sienna and I basically want to mirror uh, base the basic colours that I've got in the sky above. So I'm popping the raw sienna in uh, the same place it's going to mirror that little, sort of little lovely uh, sunburst coming out from under the cloud there before layering on some more indigo and some more Payne's grey using this, uh, don't put it on quite lightly at first with plenty of water uh, just to get that paper nice and wet so we actually get some nice smooth uh, transitions here with the colour. So you can see I'm being quite cautious at first, figuring out where I need to keep that bright white, sort of the light coming down from the clouds and reflecting on the water. It's better to be overly cautious <laughs> than overly zealous at this point. Many of the time that I've done a painting like this and got really excited to slap on that dark paint and get that sort of reflection in, only to realise that I've completely lost uh, completely lost any brightness that I've still got in the paper and it is essentially it's not going to work as a reflection. <laughs> uh, so yes, better to be a little overly cautious at this stage. Just make sure you keep plenty of that lovely bright white paper uh, with that little touch of raw sienna of course uh, that just gives it that extra, uh, that extra bloom of vibrancy. It's easiest here, at least I find it easiest to just use the big flat brush to to fill in these big old sweeps of, of colour. Uh, you may find it easier to use a smaller brush. Uh, perhaps a, a one inch flat brush also would work really well here actually to get the same uh, lines but also to give you a little bit more dexterity and control perhaps. You can see I'm just dabbing the flat brush there just using that soft sort of chiseled edge to get these lovely sort of lines leading into this pool of light giving the impression of the ripples on the waves uh, on the sea, on the lake's surface, sorry, well, I suppose they are waves, lake waves rather than sea waves. But uh, as this is the uh, oncoming storm, I suspect there would be some uh, wind starting to whip up, and this lake would not remain <laughs> quite so still looking uh, for very long. So now I'm just. Uh, putting some extra paint, getting a nice rich colour into uh, the rest of that sort of darker part of the lake. Uh, you can see I'm just taking out some turquoise there and blending that into the indigo, just uh, 
again trying to mirror the sort of the darkness and the richness of the colour that's in the top sort of part of the painting. <laughs> the observant among you will notice in the bottom left corner uh, that's the Saunders Waterford uh, logo that's been uh, stamped into the paper. It's showing up uh, with the paint because I'm actually painting on the reverse side of the paper. If you're using the right side of this paper it won't it wouldn't show or at least not nearly so much but uh, <laughs> I already have a painting on the other side <laughs> of this paper and I, I wanted to get really good sort of full use out of this lovely uh, this lovely expensive art paper so I paint on both sides <laughs> so apologies for that if that's uh, uh, that's been bugging you but um, it doesn't end up showing that much in the finished painting just as you can see I just slapped a load of indigo and Payne's grey right over it I've uh, got this lovely sort of dark foreground coming in here which I really really like and now you can see I, I've cleaned off the brush a little and I'm using it to just swipe through this rich paint so a clean damp brush swiping through the rich paint creating some interesting sort of soft diagonal lines a little bit of texture here to just give the impression again of some movement uh, in this lake beneath the clouds just a little bit of water texture it's a really nice simple way to get a little bit of water texture in without uh, without worrying too much and now I'm just going to really carefully peel this tape off again and you see what I mean? We've got this lovely line of light sort of lifting up off the lake shore. This reflective uh, sort of horizon line that is coming down from that bloom of light we've got underneath uh, those dark storm clouds that are coming in from the left side. So now I'm just using a little white gouache and I'm just putting in a finishing touch which is going to be some white birds uh, flying up, fleeing in the face of the storm perhaps. So you can see I'm just using a really uh, fine brush uh, and I've watered down my white gouache a little bit just to make it a little bit uh, more easy to use, a little bit more spreadable because it can be quite thick and quite chunky sometimes. Uh, obviously don't water it down too much because then it will become very thin and it won't show up, you know, it won't stand up against these uh, dark colours. So the more you water it down the thinner the colour will become, obviously. <laughs> It seems like such an obvious thing, but I, I've made this mistake before. I, I'm sure others have as well. So I'm using it quite thickly here. And just using my uh, detail brush to just put in uh, some really simple bird shapes. I'm just going to have them sort of trying to fly in that direction from left to right across up into that top corner, perhaps fleeing the, uh, the storm front coming in from the left side. And there we have it, the finished painting. Uh, really, really happy with this one. I think it's uh, lovely and dramatic. A <laughs> nice contrast as well to some of the sort of softer, uh, sort of lightly coloured summer scenes that I've been painting recently. 
uh, as I as I speak and as I paint, uh, it's currently <laughs> quite warm in the UK at the moment. It's nearly midsummer. We've got temperatures in the sort of the mid twenties. Uh, lovely, bright, vibrant blue sky, birds singing, and here I am painting <laughs> a really dark, uh, dark, stormy old lake. But uh, perhaps that's just what you need to cool down on a hot day. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a like or uh, subscribe to the channel uh, if you're new here, I'd love to have you around. Uh, please also follow the link below to check out my Patreon page if you like these videos and would like to see some more. Um, but yeah, that's all from me today, I hope wherever you are you're having uh, a lovely rest of the day and I look forward to uh, seeing you all again in the next video.